I got over here. I think everybody might be at work. It might be the wrong time of the day. Two country, what up with it? Man, I hope y'all not doing too bad down in that um that weather down there, man. I know you in um Texas, but I know people in Louisiana and stuff or whatever. Chance, what up with it? Well y'all see today's topic. Willie, what up with it? Dietrich, what up with it? What up? TC, what up with it? Keith, what up with it? Reg, what up? D, D Red, take a trip, what up? Arkansas, what up? Okay, we had 25. Okay, James, what up? Jesse. All right. Um, this topic was brought to me, man, by some of my followers, one of my followers. Um, they hit me with this, and they're, um, I guess I'm interrupt the tap resume. Flu, what up with it? Eric, what up with it? They hit me with this, and I know it's probably kind of late in the day or whatever. Everybody probably out and about enjoying their Saturday. Um, you know, it's a beautiful Saturday for us while it lasts. Uh, before I start, man, shout out to regulators. Their anniversary is tonight. Should they 30, 40 years, whatever they is, 25 years. They are one of the oldest. I think they are the oldest sports bike club in Georgia. So much uh, love to their big beat over there. Quentin, Jay Doja, uh, Peaches Bucket, uh, D, all of them, OGs. So what up, Measy? So again, man, shout out to regulators on the anniversary tonight at the atrium. So if you ain't doing nothing, go out and support the local bike set. Um, also, don't forget this weekend, man, coming up, not today, but next weekend coming up, I'll be in Philly, man, for doing their thing, Team Money Cycles, hosting their cancer run. So please, all my followers and fans and loved ones in Philly, in that area, come out, man. The flyer's on my page. It's on my homepage. So... Make sure you're there, man. Clean up them rides and come on out. Walt, what up with it? Damon, what up? What up? What up, dog? What up, skunk? What up? <laughs> what up, Detroit? My Detroit rare breed partners. Amos, you should have got your uh, package by now. Um, Amos, I sent it to you. If you need the tracking number, let me know. Um, but anyway. We're going to get into this, man. I don't know how long it's going to last, but again, I know it's kind of late. A lot of y'all are probably out starting your day or enjoying your day or doing whatever you're doing. So, um, we're going to do it like this. Today's subject is drinking and riding. Um, first off, and, and this is going to be maybe considered kind of biased or kind of, you know, wrong coming from me because I don't drink. That's number one. Um, I do ride, but I don't drink. On the bike set, man, a lot of us, um, I'm going to need you to get and get all prepared before you go on air. I am prepared. I'm, what are you talking about, man? This stuff is like, listen, let me tell y'all something about my live broadcast. Jersey, what up? My live broadcast, I don't write anything down. I don't really pre-prepare, not unless I'm doing like a, you know, something specifically that I want to say. But when I go live, man, I just basically... Uh, you know, go live at the, whatever's on my heart, whatever's on my mind. So y'all got to work with me. That's why I kind of be all over the place. Um, um, you know, do whatever. Okay. Anyway, y'all know I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do any of the uh, the normal perceived motorcycle, bike set stuff. And I don't knock nobody that do. So let me say that right now. I don't knock anybody that does. We're really talking about the drinking and riding. Again, this comment or or this subject was brought to to me by one of my um, what up, Dwayne Carlos? What up with it, Keisha? What up? Um, no rubbing your damn head or scratching your balls and shit. <laughs> Look, man, 
My only my fans. Only my fans. Good morning, Tracy. What up, Elijah? So, this subject was brought to me, and one of my one of the followers of fans asked me to speak on it because they felt like it was a sensitive subject. Now we all know that when it comes to motorcycle, the perceived notion is that we're nothing but a bunch of alcoholics, drug heads, and whatever. We're daredevils. We try. We'll try anything. We're rowdy. We're um, you know uneducated, and the whole nine yards. Well, all of us that are in it, we kind of, we kind of looking for the word. We kind of enjoy that rainbow that's over us. That stigmatism, although we know that that's not us, but we kind of enjoy that. That if that's what you want to call the bad boy or the bad girl image, because you ride a motorcycle, we all kind of enjoy that. That that per, that persona. Um, Miss Purry, I love you. I love you. I love you. Um, I'm, I'm going to interrupt this real quick. Just want to say, um, hey, I'm just, we love you. Put it like that. We love you and uh, we loved our brother. So, hey, shout out to you. Um, but a lot of us kind of love that, that, that little, you know, cloud that's over the motorcycle set, the bad boy, bad girl image, you know, the whole nine yards. So we kind of just roll with it. Um, and believe it or not, there are, there are people in the mo- on the motorcycle set or in the motorcycle clubs who really, I ain't going to say they don't enjoy it or they don't, they don't really, they don't really, they don't care for it. But it seems like everything we do is almost alcohol related. Our bike nights or at bars or at you know or at clubs and when we book these bike nights or when we when we set up these bike nights the number one concern for the owner of the club is how much money am I going to make selling alcohol or food you know they food is yeah but they really worry about the alcohol we all know the alcohol sales is what keeps a, a bar or a club or a pub open and that's their number one concern is like hey man that's cool how much alcohol are these cats going to be drinking? Now, if you ride your motorcycle like I ride or attempt to ride like I ride or whatever, then the number one thing is this, is that you know it's, it's hard enough to ride a motorcycle sober. Let alone with any kind of impairment, i.e. you can't see at night, um, you got a headache, you got a, a hurt arm, shoulder, leg, or whatever. Anything, if you had anything to riding a motorcycle, um, you know, that's out of the good health or the whatever, the good conscience or the clear mind, sound mind thing, it becomes um, a little bit harder to ride a motorcycle. Okay. Again, we all know that. It just is what it is. Um, and, and, and yet and still, you know, we... We do what we do. Um, and again, this is not to bash anybody that does drink. Like my man, my um, my, um, my man Measy. Um, he drinks he, and he has a good time. He does his thing and, and it is what it is. And the biggest thing, man, I would tell you is this. Everybody has to be able to understand and know their limits. And you have to be able to understand and respect your brother who does not know your limits, but to him, you might be impaired in some kind of way to where you can't ride your motorcycle. You feel what I'm saying? Because we're losing people. We're losing. I'm not going to say everybody we lost is, is alcohol or drug related, but it's, it's a high majority. I am not going to put a number on it because I don't want to seem like I'm, you know, I'm saying this is because I don't, I don't know that. So I'm not going to speak on what I know, but I do know that some of the, some and, 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 and a lot of the accidents that we have had or the deaths that we have had on the bike set have been because of impairment. You feel what I'm saying? I.e. tired. Those are impairments. You were too tired to be on your bike, but you're trying to hang out. You're trying to keep up. Or maybe you were just not even um, um, uh, skilled trying to keep up. You, you feel what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people do that. A lot of people... Because they want to impress their homeboy or they want to act, they don't want to tell their homeboy, hey man, I'm not safe or comfortable with riding that speed. You feel what I'm saying? Um, they just try to hang and go into a curb or, or do whatever. And again, 
I, again, it's, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to. Um, I'm, that's not my. That's not what this whole thing is about. This whole thing is just to bring some type of awareness to us on a whole that we have to start holding each other accountable. You feel what I'm saying? If you know your brother drink, and this whether you, and I can say this whether you're in a motorcycle or in a car, but especially us on the set on these motorcycles. You, you feel what I'm saying? Um, you, we have to get to the point to where is I care about my brother. Okay, I care that he makes it home. I care that um, that his family get to see him. Because I'm gonna tell you something. One of the coldest feelings in the world, man, is to know you was you've been hanging out somewhere at a bike night or a bar or whatever you've been hanging out. And you know that this cat was drinking or your your friend or your brother, your color brother, your friend, or even if you're an independent rider, somebody you're hanging out with that you know that they was drinking. And to get that phone call that they didn't make it home. Man, that's a fucked up feeling to have, man. Because in your mind, no matter what, you're saying, damn, I should have. I should have told him, you know, not to ride his motorcycle. I should have took his keys. How many of you, how many of you ever wanted to take somebody's keys because you feel like they were too drunk to ride their motorcycle? Let's see how many of y'all can be truthful about that. How many of you guys ever been around somebody who you felt like was not, they, it wasn't safe enough for them to ride that motorcycle? You feel what I'm saying? And you really want to tell them, but, you know, we're, we're taught, what up, Juice? We're taught to... You know, mind our business. That ain't your business. You know what I'm saying? That's it. You ain't even in that club. That's his club. They should know. That's his club, brothers. Um, you know, boom. Well, I made that decision twice. Twice in my life, I made that decision not to say nothing, to mind my own business. You feel what I'm saying? And that person died. Before I got home, I got the news that they passed away. And everybody, and this will kill you too. This will kill you. If you're with the person, and I'm and I'm and I'm only speaking from my experience, and I don't want to put nobody out there, I really don't. But when you, if you're with that person and you're riding with that person, okay, and something happened to them and they die, and you were there with them and you knew that he was drunk or impaired, you got to live with that for the rest of your life. And I've seen this. I'm telling you, I've seen it. I've seen it, and this ain't me talking no shit. This ain't me making nothing up. I've seen it, man. I've seen it where these three rolled off, and one or two didn't make it, and the person that that did make it, you you got to live with that, because now everybody's coming up with all these kind of. Because this is the first thing I ask, and 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 I ain't gonna say I don't have no sympathy because I love I, I have sympathy for the loss of human life. Period. If you lose your life in any kind of way, shape, form, or fashion, it's fucked up. Period. Whether I directly knew you, whether I had a personal close relationship with you, or um, you were just you were just a person that I heard of or knew or whatever. Halfway home, I noticed he was worn. He was worse off than I thought. Carlos, bylaws state a brother should not let a brother ride and pay. I know that, and we got that. And uh, most of the clubs have that in their bylaws, but yet and still, yet and still. Those bylaws are not being honored and respected. Because I'm going to tell you like this. As my brother. Man, this is going to get crazy. I got I to be careful how I say this. I really do. Okay. As my brother. I should not have to police you. Therefore, not allow me to have a good time. Because I got to watch to make sure you don't get drunk or do something stupid or, or get on your motorcycle. So now, therefore, I can't have a good time and do what I would be doing because I got to watch you and make sure that you're not going to do something stupid because you out here super drunk and, you know, doing a bunch of super, uh, super stupid dumb shit. And most likely, I got to damn near fight you or battle with you to, to tell you about yourself. You feel what I'm saying? Either, you know, trying to get the keys from you. Hey, dude, that's enough. You feel what I'm saying? One thing about this bike set, man, the, the number one thing. Nigga, I'm a grown-ass man. It's my motherfucking motorcycle. You can't tell me about my... Nigga, this is my motorcycle. True enough. You feel what I'm saying? My man, Jersey, I haven't spoken to a person before 
and I rode up on him and after his accident where he died and it stayed with me for the past six years and I don't think it will ever leave me. Hey, appreciate that, Jers. Ride to your comfortability. I learned that when I took the Harley Davidson riding course stuck in my head, real talk. Okay, thank you, Gary. Uh, call it babysitting. <laughs> Um, you know, that's one thing we always pick. This is my motorcycle, blah, 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 blah. Nigga, I ain't drunk. Nigga, fuck that. I can ride my bike. And, you know, again, my whole night is fucked up. My ride home is fucked up because now I got to watch you and I'm worried about you. And and um, if I'm behind you, I got to worry about you doing something and me not running over you, killing myself and... Oh my goodness! Um, oh my goodness! So basically, man, this this video, like I said, there's so many different directions that we can go with this subject, with this topic. And again, who am I to tell anybody what they should or should not be doing? All I'm saying is this: is that there's nothing wrong with having a good time, and and if you are the kind of person that drinking is the way that you have a good time, you, you know, you got to be drunk, you got to be lit, you got to be straight. You feel what I'm saying? You got to be cool as they come. Man, I'm just trying to get cool, salesman. You feel what I'm saying? Then that's fine. But know your know your limit and know your threshold, and don't make it. Don't put. Don't involve me in having to make a judgment call on you. You feel what I'm saying? Um. Do clubs have protocol to not drink on the ground? Man, they got them all day, Keisha. But we all know that that don't mean shit, man. With clubs got protocols on all kind of subjects. But that don't mean shit. That clubs got protocols on being bitch assness. Clubs got protocols on being hoes. Clubs got protocols on respect for their brother. Clubs got protocols on all kind of shit. But that shit is ignored on a daily. You feel me? So that don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? Well, well right now... Um, much you made an attempt to try and help your brother, your job is done. Help those that want to help themselves. Hey, man, I, I hear you, Chuck. I hear you big time, <laughs> loud and clear. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, Eric, what it do? What up, Nitty? I hear you loud and clear, but at, at what point, at what cost? You know, and that's what I'm saying, man. This shit, this, this subject is so tricky because, you know, you can be put into the category, man, mind your business. Say, that ain't your business, man. If he say he good, he good. But I'm looking at this, man. I'm saying, man, you know, man. So I just, what I'm asking, and, what, and I think what would be the proper terminology, what would be the proper thing to do is, I'm asking us to be aware to not put our brothers and sisters in that situation to where they got to feel uncomfortable because of how you are. Or what you got to do, you know, you know, you riding your motorcycle to get home or whatever. And respect the fact that if your brother or sister tells you, hey, man, I think you're a little bit doing a little bit too much, man. To chill out because I'm and, and again, I'm not trying to be judgmental. That's the part I got to be careful of, because if you have to be high or drunk to have a good time, high or drunk does not go with motorcycling. When you're on these motorcycles, you got to have every wit about yourself. You got to have every uh, physical ability. You got to have every mental, you know, touch. Every, you know, you got to have every focus that you could possibly have. Um, and you, you have to be able, you, you, you have to be able to have that on these motorcycles. It's already bad enough. Two wheels over four. Over two, two wheels versus four wheels. Versus 6, 10, 12, 14, 18 wheels, the whole nine yards. So we, we already lose as it is because we got the less amount of wheels. Um, um, so anyway, let me see what my Arctic, Arctic Wiggins said. I've seen this topic that you were speaking about completely destroyed club, and it also affected the relationship with families, i.e. wife and kids. We already know. We already know a drunk ain't shit. So we <laughs> that part right there. A man has to take responsibility for himself and his actions. I agree. A lot of brothers, this is from Drew right here. Drew says, a lot of brothers have issues with drinking. With drinking, we won't admit it. They drink. We can't have fun without it. But they are wrong. Since we are brothers, we should not make our brothers make choices. 
and that and that's basically what I'm saying. Thank you, sir. Um, Drew, Jersey. Some of us don't realize how much we are drinking from day to day, and the effects it's having on our body. I went to the doctor and was told about the effects it has had on my body. I'm, I'm, it's not just about. Um, that's Jersey. Thank you, Jersey. Jersey is the president of Golden Hawks. Love you, homie. Call us used by the by the brother of water, and as a subtle hint. Uh, okay, so. Again, it's not about me preaching or telling you, you know, that, like I said, I want to get that, I want to get that understood from the beginning. But I'm just trying to bring some kind of understanding and awareness to this because, again, a lot of us are, like I said, our bike nights are at bars or restaurants and all, and this is what I'm trying to tell you. And again, this has to do with our circle, that everything we need is in our circle. We contain ourselves. Um, we should protect ourselves the whole nine yards. What up, Candace? So, with that being said, when, when even when you're at a clubhouse, you know, with these motorcycle clubhouses, um, you know, let's not make the main focus of the bike night about the alcohol. You feel what I'm saying? Because a lot of these owners and stuff that got these bars and these clubs and stuff, that's all they care about is how much alcohol is going to be bought. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we'll let you have a club, but man, how much alcohol is going to be bought? I mean, how much they're going to be drinking? Because we all know the alcohol sales is, is marked up 300%. Now, I said that to say, that said it to say this, is that when it comes to riding your motorcycle again, like I said this earlier, you, you need every piece of ability you have. Every piece of ability you have, you need that when you're on your motorcycle. I promise you, you need that. Every piece of ability you have, you need when you're on your motorcycle. So you you have to be conscious and aware of of what it is that you're doing. Who you know you you, you know exactly. Like I said, everybody said that they got their limit. Oh, I know when I'm drunk. Trust me, I ain't drunk. I know when I'm drunk. You can't tell me. Say I ain't drunk. I'm telling you, I ain't drunk. Well, you might not be drunk for you, but is it? I mean, but you know. How fair is that for me to take a chance on on your limit or how drunk is your drunk? I mean, it's just crazy. It's, it's a crazy subject. Um, <laughs> if you need to drink or get high to enjoy what we do all the time, and we are, we're really enjoying what we are doing, if you need to drink or get high to enjoy what we do all the time, are we really enjoying what we are doing, my man Jersey? Hey, my man, Asim, <laughs> my man, Kadabi, don't talk about bars and clubs. <laughs> we deal with, man, make sure that alcohol is not the main reason why they're dealing with us. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm glad you're speaking on it. This is a great way to use your platform. All you need to do is plant the seed. It will take root. Okay, Drew. Just don't drink, period. When you say... You're not drunk. You drunk. <laughs> That's my man Frank. Frank said, "Any nigga that say he not drunk, he already drunk." That what it is, Frank. He already drunk. <laughs> well, again, man. I, all I would ask is that just don't have, just don't put me in a compromising situation. Just don't put me in a situation where I can't enjoy myself. Oh man, damn. Say what's wrong, nah, man. I gotta watch this nigga, man. man. You feel what I'm saying? Oh man, now I gotta watch. You know. Cause you say shit you ain't supposed to say. Everybody said a drunk mind a drunk man speaks a sober mind. Yeah. Yeah, we all we all know a female that get drunk and say some wild and crazy shit. Yeah, but mm. Sell, my man Chris Amos, sell the first time a situation like that happens, and if and and if that person makes it home safely and you know they were too drunk to ride, I feel that person's actions need to be brought to the club officers and um, he said some more stuff. Let me see. The club officers and members and may take will be suspend that member or some type of punishment should be given. If it happens again, then he or she needs to be put out the club because then that one person is jeopardizing the whole club. Example, if I knew a soldier smoked weed, there's no in hell I would take that soldier to the fight with me. First, I would get him help. Then if he continues, I would ch chapter him out the army. I can go, bro. Okay. So, I mean, and again, like I said, we know we got by this and that in our bylaws. Yeah, but you got presidents, vice presidents, you know, national officers, the whole nine yards that drink and love to get drunk and some other shit. So, 
um, it just is what it is, man. I can honestly say that I used to ride drunk, drink a lot till I went down. Good thing I was okay, but I've seen bad situations. Shout out to my man, Roderick Bear. Love you, homie. Um, and thank you for that at, at minutes. It's hard enough. It's, it's hard enough to ride sober. Buzz riding is riding drunk. Okay, that's what they call it, buzz riding. In formation, you are jeopardizing your brother's lives. You just saved someone's life today. Um, so, that's that. That's all I'm saying, man, is that this this drinking and riding thing, we have to do, what I Reese, we have to do better as individuals on policing our own brothers. And and then let's talk about this. So, so jurors, how, what is the extent that you go to to save a person's life that don't want to be saved because they're thinking that they're that they're thinking that they're they're not drunk and they're okay and that you know now it seems like you hating on them because you don't want them to ride their motorcycle or whatever the situation may be. I don't know what's what be going through their head, but um, you know. So so uh, what's the limit, man? Well, where do we go, uh, John? T, what up? How far do we go um, with this? You know so. I mean, you know, I've seen people fight their brother. Uh, I've seen us, you know, surround a brother to say, hey, man, give me them keys, homie. I don't give a fuck what you say or whatever. Um, you know, you're not riding this motorcycle. Um, you say you flat the tires, Nitty? Okay, so then what you going to do with the bike if you're out of town? If, you, if you're somewhere out of town and you flat his tires, then what you going to do with the bike? So then are you responsible if something happened to the bike, if the bike gets stolen, or does that responsibility fall on him? He shouldn't have been drunk, him or her, because they shouldn't have been drunk. You feel what I'm saying? What I'm saying is that we really have to think about this thing on a whole parameter. Um, um, you know, it's, 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 it's bigger than just, hey, you know, you drunk. So now he's drunk. We all on the ground. Let's say we out of town. We all on the ground. And he drunk. So how we how do we deal with his ride his motorcycle? Sometimes you have to be the bad guy. But when the next day comes, eyes are they will appreciate. It. Okay, you can be mad as long as you're alive. <laughs> hey, good point, Roderick. What a big sale, Black Moses Pound Pie. What up, Moses? I will buy another tire. Okay. So, um, you can't replace him. Every boat till until. To kill somebody and destroy a family because of your bad decision. People never change until they hit rock bottom and something tragic happens. Then it's time to talk about it. Guess what? Okay. My man Everett. Their lives are worth more than a toe or a tire. I agree. Now, And I'm going to tell you something else too. Um, like I said, man, this, this subject is, is crazy because it, it has so many parameters, so many different legs and avenues that it can grow into. Um... All I'm saying is that we all know that we've been in situations or we've seen somebody that's drunk on their motorcycle or they're drunk and their motorcycle is present and that's the only way that they have to get home, um, you know. And that's something that I think that we need to, on the bike set, you know, just get better at. Um, you know, and I, I don't think, and people always say the person needs to know their limits. Hell, I need to know your limits. If you with me and you hanging out and you getting drunk, I need to know your limits. And me personally, I'm going to tell you, like, I don't drink, man. I don't drink. I, I don't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just don't do it. And plus, I don't like it. It is what it is for those that do. You know, but again, just 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 think about how unfair it is to your club. Think about how unfair it is to the people, you know, who who you might affect if something happens to you. You feel what I'm saying? Do you think sometimes they feel obligated to ride drunk because they can't leave their bike in the parking lot of a nightclub? That's what I love about clubhouses. We would take your keys and pull your shit. Yeah. I, and I mean, that's that's the issue. I'm not going to leave my bike. I mean, you know, and we're saying, okay, well, what are we going to do with the bike? Who going? I'm not going to leave my bike to ride his bike. But that's what I'm saying. But see, this, this is what I'm saying. Listen to, listen to how all of that affects everybody around you. Because now we're making decisions. Um, that we don't that we don't have to make act like you are drunk too and need that person. This is actually drunk to stay with you. <laughs> hey, Jersey, that sounds like some uh, that sounds like some shit, Jersey. That uh, you know what I'm saying? So about that old that old uh, 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 uh that sounds like some of that old boyfriend and girlfriend type shit. Acting like they're drunk so that you can take them home, <laughs> or 
Yeah, whatever. Hey, man. Do females act like they drunk to go home with a nigga? Or do niggas act like they drunk to go home with a female? Hey, hey. For sure, nitty, AAA is the best thing smoking. If you have a motorcycle, AAA, they have motorcycle coverage. You need to have that. If you own a motorcycle, well, I don't care what kind you own, AAA has a motorcycle coverage for a AAA. You damn sure need to have it. I promise you, it's worth every dime. It's the shit. So, get you some AAA. Every member, uh, part of your membership now when you join a club should include your AAA. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, again, I'm just bringing a little light to it. Um, us, we all we got, man. And I'm asking us to make better decisions. I'm asking us to make better choices. Um, because when you drink, hell, I might as well drink because we got to watch each other. You know what I'm saying? But they always say, well, somebody got to be sober. You got to have a designated driver. Well, it's hard to have a designated rider if we all on our motorcycle. How do we do that? How do we have a designated rider when we all on our motorcycle? So how about you just be more cautious of us that don't drink, that don't fuck around when we're on our motorcycles? Okay? And again, I love everybody. I won't buy you a drink because I don't drink. I got all that, Jack, uh, Jaquise. I got the whole get down, a platinum member, the whole nine yards, but I just wanted to at least know that they knew that. They can handle the rest of that business. But don't ask Big Seller to buy you a drink because I don't drink. Just don't. Um, and besides, I don't condone drinking on your motorcycle, no way. I know this might get some people upset, but fuck it. The ones out there riding. While drunk are the ones who don't have burial or life insurance and know they dumb ass dead and they have left a child or that's another thing too, this life insurance shit. You know, children being with nothing. Get your act together. My three cents. Triple A for those that need a hey, hey. <laughs> laugh a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all like this right now. If something happened to me, Lord forbid, but when it's my time, it's my time. And Queen do a GoFundMe, she ain't doing nothing but robbing y'all. She just looking for some extra paper probably to buy her a little boo, a new motorcycle or something. Because I got plenty of insurance, burial, everything straight. I don't need nothing. So, something happened to me and Queen do a GoFundMe, y'all need to tell her, girl, stop. <laughs> but anyway, man, I love y'all. Truly, 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 I do. Stephanie, what up with it? <laughs> what up, Dirty? Um, Stephanie, we're talking about drinking and driving. Dirty, we're talking about drinking and driving, man. I mean, drinking and riding, drinking and riding. It's not just you that is affected as a drinker, but it's the people that are around you that have to watch you because you're drunk. The people around you, they got to alter their plans and their party and their fun because they got to watch you because you're drunk. Um, you know, we all on our motorcycle. We got to try to figure out what to do with your motorcycle now because you done got drunk and somebody got to take you home and this and this and that and all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Just a lot of shit that come with it. So, again, just, uh, let's just kind of be more, um, just kind of just be more, um, you know what I'm saying? You know, just kind of be more whatever. And again, I'm telling y'all right now, if something happened to me, and Queen do a GoFundMe, she's stealing from y'all, I'm telling you. We don't need no GoFundMe's. We don't need, oh, none of that. We need a bury cell. I should be buried in a Harley Davidson casket with the Dallas Cowboy insides. That part. It's already wrote down in the wheel, paid for. The, a Harley Davidson casket with the Dallas Cowboy on the inside. That's how it should go. So, if Queen do a GoFundMe, you feel what I'm saying? I'm telling y'all right now, she's stealing. She don't need no money. She don't need nothing for your boy. I'm, I'm, what they say, I'm prayed up, paid up, and I can be laid up. You know what I'm talking about? We usually have someone following the cage. <laughs> okay, Coco, we don't do the cages around here. We ride, we're we going to ride and whatever. If I ain't got no cage, I'm going to stay with pound for pound. 
We will see you, bro, in a few days, pounding Big Cell, Moses, and the crew. That part right there. Choke yourself with that statement. I'm just saying, man. I'm prayed up. My burial is paid up. So all you got to do is lay me up. By it. You know what I'm talking about? But, again, Harley Davidson on the outside casket. Now, if it ain't Harley Davidson, Queen has stole some money. If it ain't got the Cowboys blue and silver on the inside with the star on there, Queen has stole some money, buddy. Because it's already paid for. John Bunch, what it do, man? <laughs> People just don't want to talk about it. They have HD caskets. Yes, they do have HD. If you're bred right, CJ, they got HD caskets. Trust me, I've already went and looked at mine, kind of laid it out, you know what I'm saying, the whole nine yards. You know what I'm saying? And not, not that I'm talking about caskets like I want to go get in one anytime soon. But I'm just saying, man. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, so, there it is there. Drinking and riding. Check yourself before your friends have to check you. Don't drink and ride because who's going to ride your motorcycle home? Now you want me to leave mine because I got to ride yours the whole nine yards. It's your man, Big Cell, FHOH, and I see it. Not judging. Just wanted to bring this up. It's not fair to me. I can't have a good time and enjoy myself because I got to watch your drunk ass. We all know a drunk ain't shit, and we say they say a drunk to a drunk mind speaks a sober truth, which is bullshit. Cause we know a whole lot of motherfuckers right now that get drunk and just say shit that they want to say. Besides, when you get drunk around some of these motherfucking ladies, let me tell you some ladies. You fuck around, and get drunk around some of these motherfuckers. You gonna wake up in the morning talking about whose dick is this? It's because it's in your mouth. Who whose dick is this? You know what I'm talking about? I'm just trying to tell you. You motherfucker gonna put it up in your mouth. I'm just telling you right now. Fuck around if you want to and get drunk around some of these niggas. They ain't gonna have no respect for you. You know what I'm talking about? And men. You feel what I'm saying? Fuck around and get uh, drunk around some of your homeboys. On that note, I'm gone, man. You feel what I'm saying? Love you. Don't drink and ride. You feel what I'm saying? Be cognizant of the people around you that got to watch you while you drunk. You feel what I'm saying? Ain't no designated driver. Or designated rider, so. We all got to ride. Me have to make a decision because of you and your fun or you and your decisions. I should be able to do me and you should be able to do you. You know what I'm saying? Just that simple. Love y'all. Peace, man. I got shit to do today.